um, World War II, and uh, I was called back during the Korean thing. Didn't serve too long, but uh, just was reserve. Um, what was your branch of service? A Marine Corps. And what was your highest rank? A uh, sergeant. What general locations did you serve? Uh, mostly in the Pacific area, overseas, and, and Guam, and, and um, Tinian, and and a wee talk in the Marshall Islands. And I got, I got over to the Pacific by way of the Panama Canal on a troop ship, which was highly unusual. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enjoyed. You joined. Why did you join? Well, I had two brothers in, who were in, and uh, I just turned 17 and I wanted to get in. My mother let me go in. <laughs> and um, you were living at home at the time? Yes. And do, do you recall the date? Pardon? The date you enlisted? Um, September 2nd, 1943. And uh, did, did you, you picked the branch of service you... That's right. Yeah. yeah. How? For particular reason? No, I just uh, want to be, be a tough guy, so to speak. <laughs> so, um, tell me about your first days in service. Pardon? First, first days in service. Can you tell me about that? About the first few days you served? In, in the service? Yeah. Um, like boot camp? Oh. Uh, was pretty rough down in South Carolina. Boot camp to this day in the Marines is not a picnic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All set. Did you um, enjoy any particular part of it or Pardon? like any particular part of boot camp training? Do I have any picture you say? Or did you like or dislike any particular parts of boot camp training? Do they like any part of it? Do, do or, say? or dislike? Well, there was no picnic. There was no picnic. You, you tolerated it. And, okay. and uh, kind of expected it. Because he, uh, and it lived up to his expectations, but I came out of it all right. Put on weight. Muscle weight. Muscle weight, so to speak. Um, do you remember your instructors? Do I remember them? Yeah. Um, the, the chief instructor was a uh, an Irish from from New York, and uh, I forget his name now, but I think it was Don Waite, but it was the chief uh, drill instructor. Yeah, and they had a few other ones, but the main one was all from New York. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so how did how did you get through it? How did you? I, deal with boot camp training. I, I, I was okay. It's, you know, after boot camp, it's, you get to get the swing of things. <laughs> More or less, have to live with it and, and go from there. Um, so, where, where did you go after boot camp? I uh, went to um, North Carolina, Camp Lejeune, in North Carolina for a row. I was in a mortar, in the mortar squad. 60 millimeter mortar. So, and that's the next state. So, stayed there until we went overseas. Do you have any fond memories of that? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The, uh, that's where you, you team up with everybody from all over the country. And, and that's it's an experience. An experience. So. Are there any stories you'd like to share? <laughs> I'd love to know. Uh, it's been so long ago, you know. And, uh, well, the, the kid that I, I joined with uh, got hit bad in, a, in an invasion. And the, he, him and I went to Springfield to uh, enlist in the Marines. And he, well, we survived. He got hit bad, but he was—he went over before me. So, like I said, we 
I went to the Pacific by way of a, an unusual situation on a troop ship going down through the Panama Canal to get to Hawaii. And that's the long way to go. <laughs> it's, uh... What were your first impressions when you arrived? At... Overseas? Yes. Uh, just a big wow. It's uh, going to be going into some sort of a uh, conflict in along the line, which I saw a little. So that was my first impression. Wow. What was your assignment there? Um, we didn't get anything specific. Um, um, I ended up doing, um, ending up on a, instead of the mortar, mortar squad, I ended up going to a, a little island and it was on a, uh, um, a large gun, three inch gun, they call it. It was an assistant gunner on a three inch gun. So that was a little, little switch around, but they were utilizing us when, um, anyway, even machine guns. So you had more than one occupation, so to speak. So. Um, did you, did you go anywhere? Where specifically did you go when you were overseas? Um, well, I went to, uh, in the Marshall Islands, I went there and then I'll, Outfit was breaking up, and we went from the Marshall Islands. We went back to Hawaii, and then from Hawaii, I stayed in Hawaii a, a month or so, and then we we got on a uh, uh, I think it was an LSD. And that was later on. Um, we went to uh, Guam from there, from Hawaii. Yeah, from Guam. Uh, which was, we took back from the Japanese. Oh, and then we had stationed at, at Guam. So, worked out well. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, could you describe a typical day in your service? Pardon? Could you describe a typical day for you while you were in the service? A typical day? Yeah. No, it's just do what you were told to do and, and do it properly and no other recourse but to obey the instructions. <laughs> um, you said you saw a little bit of combat. Did you feel comfortable sharing that? The, we used to go on patrols. Guam was loaded with it. They took that in 30 days, but there was a lot of Japanese still on the island, and we used to go out on patrols periodically. And even when the war ended, there, there were still Japanese on the island. And they were there 10 years after the war was over, and they were still there. It's just uh, one of those things they didn't believe it. So, so that was the closest thing to when you got to actual combat. You know? So, so um, you, you don't have to answer this if you don't feel comfortable, but uh, were, were there any casualties in your unit? The casualties? Um, yeah, one, one fellow got the, uh, on patrol, he was hit in the helmet by a Japanese thing and it split the helmet in half and took the little tip of his ear off and, uh, he tried to minimize the thing, even though it was equal to a purple heart, and, which he, uh, he took it, he took it reluctantly. He didn't, he didn't think it was that severe. Yeah. The helmet took it off. So. Um, were you awarded any medals or citations? No, not really. No. No. Um, did, as a sergeant, did you do battle planning? When they what? Did you do battle planning at all? Or no. any sort of strategy? No. no. <laughs> um, did you sustain any injuries? No. no. So you're lucky. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fortunate. <laughs> uh, how did you stay in touch with your family? Pardon? How did you stay in touch with your family? Letters. Letters. 
you know, and uh, they were all censored. So and that was it, just letters, no telephones, no nothing. <laughs> Do you get to send it frequently? Or? And we used to mail periodically, yeah. Sometimes you had to wait to get the mail, and if you were going from point A to point B, you had to wait to get to point B before you could give your mail to somebody. <laughs> Um, what was the food like? Pardon? What was the food like? It was good. Could have been better, but it was good. Yeah. Didn't like the mutton from Australia, though. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, we, we survived. Um, you guys, did you have enough supplies? Oh, yeah. 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 And, um... Did you feel any pressure or stress? Not really. I was too young. Was, every, every day was a every day was a, an adventure. Uh, did you did you do anything special for good luck? To what? Did Did you have anything special, or did you do anything special for good luck? Not really. No. no just pray a lot. That helps. Good way. <laughs> um, how did you guys entertain yourselves? How did they what? Entertain yourselves, did you? I don't know. Entertainment. I don't know. If you want to call it entertainment. <laughs> uh, just survive. That was entertainment. It's uh didn't look upon it as entertainment, just get to another day that was that was entertainment enough. <laughs> you guys didn't play any like cards or anything during that? Yeah, uh cards they played uh, uh after the war they coming back on the troop trips and played a lot of cards and but up to then it was uh we, we were playing cards, yeah. I wouldn't call that entertainment, that's just Making the clock go by quicker. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you see any USO shows? US what? USO shows? Mm, not really, no. Um, closest one was, I think Bob Hope was in Pearl Harbor when he was, um, all the ships there were, and he was doing an entertainment on one of the ships. But that was it. Uh, I wasn't in to that too much. I mean, I wasn't, my stint there wasn't particularly getting into shows, you know. Not, not where I was anyway, so. <laughs> um, did you go on leave at all? Leave? No, after the war was over, yeah. Once they went over, and we, it was over until they came back. Yeah. Uh, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Mm. <laughs> well, the, the, the most humor was right in that right at the very end of the war, just on the. Uh, when they dropped the uh, the bomb on Hiroshima, Harry Truman was the president of the United States then, and he and it was all over the Pacific. He made an announcement that today a, a lone B twenty nine dropped an atomic bomb, on him. and when he pronounced the uh, he said, and the, the airplane, the B twenty nine, came from one of the islands in the Marianas, and uh, and uh, he said it was dropped on the city of, and he pronounced it Hiroshima. And, and the fellow in the tent there said, Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the same fellow that said Gesundheit, I'm going to forget his name, he said that, um, okay. yeah, he said Hiroshima. And then he, uh, the same fellow said, you know what? We're in the Marianas. We're, I was on the island of Tinian. 
that's where the bombs came from. Uh, but we were we were in an outfit, but we, we were guarding something, but we didn't know where we were guarding. Actually, we were guarding the airfield where the, the bombs came from. And we didn't find that out until three days later when they dropped the second one, which was August 9th. The first one was August 6th, and the second one was August 9th. And then the um, after they dropped that one, a couple of days later, the whole island erupted. And... Uh, because the Japanese said they were going to give up. And on the 14th of August, uh, they said, that's it, we're going to give up, and give up the battle. And with the, with the sky lit up, there was traces all over the place. And everything. It was Guam, Guam, Saipan, and Tinian, islands very close to each other. And everybody was saying the war is over, the war is over, which it was. So it's September 2nd, they, they signed on the of the Missouri. And that's the day I went to service, September 2nd. And the war ended on September 2nd. I came home and I told my mother, it took me two years to end this war. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> how, how did you feel when you found out the war was over? Uh, very, very lucky because we were, we were all getting ready to go to Japan and fight in Japan and say to Ton of lives, tons of lives. Probably mine also. That's uh, because the war would have lasted a lot longer, but they hadn't dropped that thing. And, uh, it stopped it in a matter of days. So it was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the question: Did you have a question there? Yeah, you were, you were talking about your brothers. Oh, my brothers, yeah. I had a brother that was um, in uh, Australia and New Guinea. He'd been there for, he went overseas uh, two months after the war started. He was in the, he was in the National Guard. And uh, then I had a brother that, uh, I had a picture of my brother. You know, and my, it's a picture of my brother, the, the one that went to Europe. That's the, uh, my brother Tim. You know, oh yeah. These, that's me and my brothers. That, that was in the uh, newspaper in the uh, New Haven Register. We all came home, right? thankfully. <laughs> Mother must have been happy. Uh, happy, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Did any of you guys pull pranks on each other? Not really. No, not really. I mean, uh, uh, brothers or... Uh, Your or brothers, the, well, uh, Nah, serious. If we're doing a prank, we don't even know it was a prank. It's just horsing around, I guess. <laughs> um, what did you think of your fellow officers and servicemen? Thank you. Officers? Yeah. Um... Good, good. They uh, told it like it was, and they were firm, and we were we respected the firmness, and we go from there. So, yeah, they were right. Did you like any of them in particular? Anyone? Did you like any of your officers particularly? No, not really. They're all the same. <laughs> they got more stripes, or they're the boss. <laughs> And what about your fellow servicemen? Fellow servicemen? Yeah, what did you think of them? Yeah, we, we get along. Yeah, usually. Yeah, they're all in the same boat. So, worked out well. How to get along. <laughs> How to get along, right? <laughs> so, um, after your service, uh, can, you, can you tell me about the day you were discharged? Yeah, I I got discharged from um, an outfit down in the Navy Yard on Bayonne, New Jersey, and uh, I got out in April of 2046, 40, the year after the war was over, uh, and then I went to photography school. I've been doing it ever since. So yeah, that was good. 
something. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your homecoming like? Pardon? What was your homecoming like? Homecoming? Yeah. Good. My mother was happy to see us home. Yeah, it's good to get home. And I got married a year and a half after I uh, got home, settled down, <laughs> got a car, drove it around. <laughs> um, so was, was your education for photography supported by the GI Bill? Yeah, I uh, took a course in photography down in uh, New Haven. Um, man had a studio and he, he did it under the GI Bill of Rights. We had, he had six pupils and uh, all he wanted was six and I was fortunate to be one of the six. And that's where I learned to retouch and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> so, worked out well. Um. Did you make any close friendships during the service? In the service? Yeah, one with a, a CB of all people. We, we had a hitchhike, so to speak, on a, on a ship from Pearl Harbor. And uh, there was about 30 of us that were on the CB ship. They were in into dredging and they were going to Guam, but they dropped us off at an island, a little tiny island in the, uh, in the Marshalls. And, and uh, there was an older guy there, and we got to be good and friendly. And ironically, uh, he lived in, of all places, in Bayonne, New Jersey, and that's where I was stationed after the, after the, and I went to see him, and, and he, uh, we got to be good friends. He even came to my wedding a year later, so, all the way from Bayonne, New Jersey. <laughs> Do you still keep in contact with him? And he's gone now, but we did keep, yeah, he's gone. He was older. He was twice as old as me. He was a fatherly figure. Good man. Most of the Seabees were up in age. They were all tradesmen and whatnot. They, uh, the average Seabee was, uh, was a lot older than the regular military bunch, as a rule. So it worked out well. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. <laughs> um, so to backtrack, was was patrolling your only duties during your service? Patrols? Yeah. Um. No, I was a, um, a fifty caliber machine gun. I'm gone. Did a little bit of everything. You had to be you had to adapt, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I was a 50 caliber, and I, I was a, an assistant gunner on a three inch, um, I think I mentioned that before. Um, um, a small cannon, so it was, <laughs> but it was a, made a loud boom. So, but other than that, we're all, and the Marines are all riflemen, and they go from there. You learn the rifle. You never went out your rifle. <laughs> could be small, it could be big, but it's a rifle. So, so, yeah. That, that, that was about it. What kind of equipment did you have on you whenever you went out? Equipment? Yeah. Uh, when you say went out, I mean... Patrol or... Patrol. Uh, your, your basic, uh, maybe a couple of grenades and some... And your uh, and your rifle and your ammunition, yeah. And hope you didn't bump into anybody. <laughs> uh, so, um, you're you're a photographer now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, That's what I am. <laughs> did Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military? Did I want? Did your military experience influence your thinking about the war, about war, about the military in any way? Yeah. Of course, now wars are different, but uh, what had to be, had to be. And we went to the Korean thing. I got called back during the Korean War for a while, but uh, somebody's got to do it. So 
they uh, step up to the plate and do it. So, and try to do it with with some uh, zeal and get it done and done, done correctly, which so far we have. But lately, it's been a different story, <laughs> entirely different story, unfortunately. Um, can you tell me about how Korea was? How what? You, you said you got called back for Korea. Yeah, during the Korean War, I was in the inactive reserve, wow. and the Korean War broke out, and they they activated everybody. Um, it was inactive. We didn't go to any meetings. We just were inactive reserve, and they called us all back. The active reserves went right to Korea, but the inactive reserves all ended up down in either San Diego or Camp Lejeune. So that's <laughs> or Camp Pendleton. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it worked out well. I didn't stay in long. I just, I just uh, bought a car, just got a new apartment, just got a TV set, and just had a, a son, and I got called back. So, worked out. <laughs> um, did you join any veteran organizations? Uh, VFW. I bought the VFW. That was Farm Wars. Very active in it? Not really. Mm -hmm. but I, no, not really. I was at one time. And I uh, go down for an occasional beer. So go from there. <laughs> and um, did you attend any reunions? No. No. Um, and how did your service and experiences affect your life? Uh, well, Glad to be here, and, uh, and you're more appreciative of things. Could be worse, and, and it could be better, but it could be a lot worse. Could not be here. That's the other alternative. So worked out well. Came home. I joined it September second, and and the war ended on September second. And like I said, I told my mother it took me two years to end the war, you know, <laughs> right through the day. <laughs> so, um, is there anything else you'd like to add that we didn't cover? Or? No, not really. Just that the military, it would be nice if there was compulsory military for people. I've often said that, and it's not everybody agrees, but I think everybody should put in there fair share of time and, and maybe easy on but in the long run, you know. Some countries still do that, but uh, we've never, so you always had to either enlist or the drafted one of the two. So other than that, uh, lucky to be here. <laughs> so it goes that way. Well, um, thank you for your service. Okay. And thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I hope this does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs>